Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. I've realized over the last like month or two months, we've gained like 20,000 ish subscribers. I don't know if I've one single time introduced myself. You guys don't know my name, but you'll yell at me on the street. You're the guy from Guessing Ike's Lunch or tuck your shirt in. But none of you know that my name is Nick. None of you know. All right. We're continuing off of yesterday's video. Top 25 running back rankings broken down by tiers. We're doing that with wide receivers today. Okay, so if you missed the running back one, I highly suggest you go watch that. We'll link it in the description. Today, we're going to kick it off with three elite wide receivers in the top tier. So we're going to run through all 25 broken down by tiers for half PPR. You can adjust them to your league settings however you would like. <laughs> Numero uno, tier one are the real big dogs. We got Justin Jefferson at one, Cooper Cup and Jamar Chase, all just dynamite wide receivers. The two younger ones are are the face of the NFL for the next five, eight years. I have Jefferson at one. Again, I think this Minnesota pass offense is going to be a little more pass friendly, a little more pass heavy. And Jeff, Justin Jefferson, just them routes, man, them routes. Them routes will put you in a coffin if you watch for too long. They are tantalizing, all right? He's just so good, and I think we're going to see Justin Jefferson do what Cooper Cup basically did last year. And the reason I moved him over Cooper Cup is just the, uh, Stafford's elbow is kind of the tiebreaker for me with the Rams, man. At first, I wasn't too concerned. I was like, whatever, he's got some time. But most people I've listened to that really know what they're talking about, I'm only technically a doctor, so I listen to some doctors. They're a little bit concerned about it. Uh, I don't know if it's it's something that flares up halfway through the year, and then we have a backup quarterback with Cooper Cup. So I will go with Jefferson over Cup, and I will go with both of them over Jamar Chase, only because there's so many good weapons in Cincinnati that I'm not sure that – I'm not even going to say anything bad about Jamar Chase. He's just awesome. There's just a lot of good players in Cincinnati. Really good quarterback. Much improved offensive line, have more time to separate, get downfield, all that kind of good stuff. So those are the three in the top tier for me. All first round picks, a show, staples of your fantasy team, just absolute goodness sprouting out of these three. Okay. And just a reminder, our draft guide, which has all of our rankings, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, tight end, super flex, one quarterback is available in our draft guide right now. The easiest and the cheapest way to get it is to download the prize picks app and deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE, all right? One, that's going to get you a 100% deposit match on prize picks, which we will be making videos for the best parlays throughout the season, all fucking season. So you're getting a 100% deposit match on whatever you put down. You put down 10, you get 20, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Also get you the draft guide absolutely free. It will be emailed to you by us. If you don't see it, please check your spam folder. Draft guide is available and has our rankings as one of the many features of it, of course. If you're in a state that's not eligible for prize picks, go over to bdge.co and you can cop it there. Let's move on down the list. Tier two, I have Stefan Diggs and Devonta Adams, two of the best route runners in the league attached to two good quarterbacks. I like Diggs over Adams. I think he had a little bit of uh, an unlucky streak on deep passes last year, where the year prior to that, him and Allen were just uh, an unbelievable connection, just a plug straight into an outlet when it came to deep passes. I think we regain a little bit of that. They got no more Sanders. They got no more Beasley. So some targets are up for grabs. Of course, we'll have guys like Khalil Shakir come in. My boy Isaiah McKenzie, Gabriel Davis will take a step up. But I think Diggs is going to absolutely blast off this year. Wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if he finishes as the wide receiver one. Take good players on really good pass-heavy offenses attached to really good quarterbacks. And that's what you're doing with Diggs. Devontae Adams at five. I just can't imagine putting him any lower. I know he's got a little bit more target competition in Las Vegas, but this is the division that's going to be sh featuring shootouts between KC and the Chargers and the Broncos at Russell Wilson. So Devontae Adams might not get the target share he got in, in Green Bay while he's now sharing the field with Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro, but he's still Devontae Adams. Went to school with Derek Carr. He's going to get an unbelievable amount of red zone targets, and he is the best red zone receiver in the NFL. So he is going to convert those at a very high rate. So when you have high volume and high efficiency, you have high output, high production. Devontae Adams coming to a theater near you this fall. The next tier is CeeDee Lamb, Mike Evans, and Tyreek Hill. I love Lamb taking over as the one in Dallas there. I just don't see a world where his target numbers aren't north of 150. Cooper's gone. Gallup's going to be out for a minute. Uh, Pass-heavy offense, fast-paced offense. Dak to CD Lamb is going to be something you're hearing a lot of on NFL red zone. Mike Evans very well might lead the league in touchdowns this year. Attached to Tom Brady. Godwin's coming back from the ACL. AB's gone. Gronkowski's gone. He's by far and away the best red zone weapon they got right now. So we love Evans down there in Tampa. Don't really care that Julio's in the mix. He's shown what he's been the last couple of years. So I'm not, I'm not concerned with that. Tyree Kill, 
don't I still don't really know what to make of him, right? I just I'm not a believer in this offense. I'm not a believer in Tua yet, so it's hard to buy into Terry Kill as a guy who has a lot of his fantasy ceiling is attached to that deep prowess, that deep threat, those deep 60-yard touchdowns that he tacks on every other week or every third week. And you might say, oh, you know what? He catches the ball around the line of scrimmage. That's his game. True. And that will lead to 95 catches and 1,100 yards. But the reason he produces 1,400, 1,500, 1,600 yards in KC is because Patrick Mahomes is such a deadly deep ball thrower. So I think we see a decline in Tyreek Hill's performance now with Tua. So we move on to tier four. Those other guys should probably be going in the top two rounds. This is where the third round the fourth round. This is there's so much fucking value to be had here, right? In yesterday's video, we talked about how once you get to like RB18, those guys are so far down in my overall rankings. The reason being is because we have basically like 20 wide receivers in a row right here from from wide receiver 9 down to like wide receiver 25, 28 that I would rather take than a lot of these red flag running backs, right? And it starts in tier 4 with Pittman, who I think is going to go absolutely fucking bonkers this year with Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan always peppers his wide receiver one with targets. Roddy White Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. This is going to be a very efficient offense, and Michael Pittman does not have competition for target. And we have Debo, who you just have to respect and put him at 10, even if you don't think this offense is going to be very pass heavy. T. Higgins, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Love all three of those dudes. I have Keenan Allen above Mike Williams. I am not sure if I would actually do that in a draft, to be honest with you. I think I'd probably take Keenan Allen, but if I'm in multiple leagues, I'd split the difference between the two. You just, again, want players attached to really good quarterbacks, high scoring offenses. I think I might take Mike Williams over Keenan Allen. Is that a hot take? I don't know. It would be a hot take that I think I could agree with, that I think I could fall in love with. If you love hot takes, you might fucking love hot sauce, which is what we got here with Truff. Truff is the absolutely goaded hot sauce company, okay? They're like hot sauce for millennials. They got the wonderful packaging, but that's not why you should actually buy Truff. Truff is all, I mean, they're, the reason that they're named Truff is because all of their products are truffle infused. So they're like luxury. They got hot sauce. They got hot sauce, hot, hot sauce. They have pasta sauce. They have like olive oil now with truffle infused stuff in there. Um, they have a whole line of products that are so fucking good. I put this shit on everything. I'm not even a hot sauce guy. They have different levels of their hot sauce, but I really, really highly recommend that you guys try this stuff. Um, it is a luxury type of hot sauce. So if you have not tried it, Truff tastes delicious. I also, the pasta sauce is so good. I'm not someone who cooks pasta often, but when I do, you want a, you want a little spice, a little spicy reggaeton? Throw this on there. This is actually hot sauce for your pasta that is truffle infused okay so go down to the link in the description that'll take you to the truff store and if you use promo code bdge you're getting 15 percent off your next purchase so you're getting luxury products for a non-luxury price bdge for 15 percent off your next purchase go try truff tier five we have dj moore terry mclaurin aj brown Cortland sutton alan robinson jalen waddle marquise brown deontay johnson that is just a fat slab of wide receivers that I would be very happy hosting in my wide receiver two or three or flex role. I thought about moving Deontay Johnson out of this tier into tier number six because I don't like what's going on there in Pittsburgh with the passing game, but I think the rest of them are a really good mix of high upside, high floor. Like DJ Moore's got a really high floor. If he ever hits on touchdowns, he's going to be a monster. Terry McLaurin's too talented to to not give you a safe floor. I think Wentz is actually an upgrade to Taylor Heineke. So I like Terry's chances to blast off this year a little bit more so than he's done. AJ Brown with Philly. Listen, it's been nothing but good out of Philly camp, which has made me like him a little bit more. We know he's a dynamite athlete. He's had a little bit of trouble staying on the field. He's got to share the field with Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. And this is going to, without a doubt, be a run first offense. So I think the ceiling is a little bit capped for a guy like AJ Brown, which is why you can't draft him at his talent level. You draft him at what his reasonable projection is. I think it's I think it's around 16. All right. That's where I've settled in on him. And I think you'll be happy with him as your wide receiver two or three who gives you big explosive games every other week, every three weeks or whatever. He'll win you some weeks. That's that's really what we're looking at here with AJ Brown. Love Cortland Sutton with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has been one of the most efficient red zone throwers of the football. Sutton's going to be a monster down there. Everything out of camp has been pushing, saying that Russell Wilson's first, second, third, and look are all to Cortland Sutton. Allen Robinson is going to be a monster this year as long as Matt Stafford's elbow don't act up. He's still a good separator. He's still that fucking guy. The Rams are really excited about Allen Robinson, and so am I. I think right behind Cup, it's all Robinson. Everything on the outside, everything in the red zone, all those jump balls are going to 
Robinson, I think he's going to score double digit touchdowns if Stafford stays on the field this year. Waddle's a guy that I'm not overly excited about, but he's going to be a PPR machine. He's probably going to catch 80 plus passes, but you add a guy like Tyreek Hill to the mix and I don't see room statistically for improvement there. We know he's a great football player. There's just not a chance that he breaks out to a higher level than he did last year as a rookie because the volume simply won't be there. But wide receiver 19, you know, you, you take it there. Hollywood Brown, I think, is going to explode with Kyler Murray. They're reuniting from their college days. DeAndre Hopkins suspended six weeks. We have Zach Ertz. The only other weapon really there, Chase Edmonds gone. Chris Kirk, Christian Kirk is gone. So I think Hollywood goes, I think Hollywood helps you win like four or five of your first games. And that is enough to put me in that top 20 mark for him. Um, he was already a top 12 guy last year with Baltimore. So I think his uh, his upside is being underrated, even with DeAndre Hopkins coming back. So I really, really like Hollywood. Touch on Deontay. And we'll move to our last tier here. And it's Jerry Judy, DK Metcalf, Rashad Bateman. I'm on Raw. I just put a bunch of fucking people in here because I love all these dudes. I don't love all these dudes. Like Jerry Judy, for me, is I was really closely monitoring this Broncos camp because there's a lot of fantasy stuff going on. And most of the people that were beat reporters were saying that Judy was likely going to be the odd man out prior to Tim Patrick hurting himself. That's a little concerning, but now he's forced into an every down role. So Tim Patrick is obviously gone for the year, which means his volume floor is going to be very, very high. I would much rather have Sutton than Judy, but y'all can do whatever you want there. You just want, again, receivers attached to guys like Russell Wilson in a division that they're going to have to pass the ball and score the ball a lot. DK Metcalf is just too explosive as a player to rank him outside you know, the top 24 wide receivers. So it's more of a respect thing, but honestly, I wouldn't blame you for fading Metcalf past these next tier of guys because he's attached to Drew Locke and or Geno Smith. But you have Bateman, who's taking over as the one now at Lamar Jackson. They've got nothing else going on there besides Bateman and Mark Andrews, and the running backs are all dinged up, so they might have to go a little bit more pass-heavy than they've been. Amon Ross St. Brown is just a baller, and again, they don't really have that many weapons there either. They signed DJ Chark, but he is what he is at this point. Uh, Jameson Williams not going to touch the field until the end of the year, so it's still the Amon Ross show there, man. So I'm getting higher and higher on him. Elijah Moore is just an absolute fucking baller. I think he's going to be the wide receiver one this year in New York. He's a great separator. He broke out a little bit last year. I think we see a build up on top of that. Gabriel Davis showed his fucking chops in the preseason game last weekend when he caught that absolute seed from Josh Allen. That was a big time play. Again, just attaching good players to good quarterbacks is going to get you dubs in fantasy football. And lastly, Chris Godwin, man, I... Godwin's a dude that you should be drafting in most of your leagues. He's going to start off really slow. I don't know if he's going to play week one, week two, week three, whatever. Everything that I've heard and from everyone that I trust when it comes to injuries, Godwin is a really, really easy smash button on the draft. If he goes like fourth, fifth round, I'm definitely going to be more hesitant. But I think in a lot of leagues, they're going to say, hey, he's got the ACL tear. I don't want him. I don't want it's too much risk, whatever. I think like once you get to round six, seven, eight, he's a dude over the second half of the year, he's going to help you win fantasy championships. So if you can kind of weather the storm for half a year until Godwin gets back to 90, 95, 100%, which will be the second half of the year, I, I'm going to be looking to target Godwin if you can get him this low. Because again, like Tampa Bay, they don't really have the weapons there anymore. All the dudes that Brady loved and trusted and targeted heavily are not there. Like sure, they signed Russell Gage and sure Julio's there, but like that, those guys have never played with Brady before. Uh, Brady already had a rapport with Antonio Brown. He obviously had a rapport with Rob Gronkowski. Chris Godwin's coming back from the ACL. He's the guy that Brady was targeting really, really heavily last year. I think second half of the year, again, I think he helps you win a fantasy championship. So if you want to if you want to draft him higher, I ain't going to stop you, man. I am not going to stop you, all right? So if you want all the rankings, again, the easiest way is to go to prizepicks.com, download the PrizePix app, use promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10 or more, you'll get that 100% match. You'll get our draft guide absolutely free by doing so. And make sure you go check out Truff please. If you like hot sauce, you're going to be making wings for the NFL season. Go to truff.com. Use promo code BDG. That'll get you 15% off. Every fucking website you go to for the next two years, you're going to use promo code BDG. I don't care if it's Walmart. I don't care if it's Amazon. I don't care if it's Pornhub. Promo code BDG is going to get you some percentage off because we take care of you. All right? Prize picks, truff. I love y'all. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Yeah. Bye.